Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. You hit the spot. The place for the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. Put your thinking caps on, because the conversation starts now. Welcome to On the Edge with April Mahoney Brains. You are at the spot, the location, your favorite podcast on the planet. The place where the conversation is pointed, the guests, there she is, are sharp, and the responses are never dull. We're back in the land down under. Yes, I love Australia. It's one of my favorite places on the planet. Uh, we're with Nell Simpson. She is a body uh like you wouldn't believe at 64, okay? I could only wish, I'm working at it. She's a personal, well, do they call them personal trainers there in Australia? So she, yes. she's a personal trainer, a fitness guru, and she works with women that are in the menopause. I don't call it the menopause, I call it the mental, uh, the mental stall, because it just drives you crazy, and stops you right in your track. Well, there's three components to that, Brains. It's the mind, the body, the spirit. It's the mindset. I want to talk to her about being dedicated and being diligent and being consistent. I think that's my challenge and a lot of people's challenge. They say the hardest part of working out is putting on your tennis shoes. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, we want to talk to her on that and a lot more. Hello and welcome to On the Edge now. Uh, thank you, April. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I've been looking forward to this for quite some time. I have too. I have too. Because you know what? I love to eat. And this is my best exercise. Hand them out. <laughs> <laughs> and that's probably where I come in. Um, more than anything, all I am is just a support system for women who are having a few problems trying to lose weight. Um, and so me... As a coach, really, all I offer is a lot of support and someone to, you know, um, talk to if things are getting difficult and to have a bit of a chat to. And I, I can't tell you how many women have cried on my shoulder when that all blurts out because so many women have such amazing stories where, you know, they get to this point in their life and they are turning 45, 50. They know that they're getting older, their body's changed, they've gone through menopause, they've got more time and they go, oh, my God, I've left it to this late to try and do something. So I'm there for when that moment hits. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you're there as a sounding board because there's a couple of things that happen. You get lazy. You get lazy. You get, you get comfortable. Well, and you get comfortable. You know, it is, uh, it's a discipline. And I had to talk to myself the other day. I was going for a walk. And I looked at this huge hill and I was going to walk up the hill and I was like, oh, no, I'm going to go around another way. I don't want to go up the hill. But then I said to myself, you know what, April, do you know how many people can't get out of the bed? Do you know how many people can't walk? Do you know how many people don't have a piss, pick your, pick your west? I can't even say the word. A pretty place. <laughs> yes. That to live and to walk, it should be a gift to yourself. It should be a reward. It shouldn't be a punishment. Definitely. And. For me, when I train women, I teach them how to do strength training. So they lift weights. And when you're staring down at a 90 kilogram bar to do a deadlift, mm. it takes a lot of strength in the mind to, to do it. Like if you're going for a personal best, and this has taken probably a long time to get to this point. But when you start strength training, you not only train your body to be strong, but your mind becomes strong because it it does need a lot of strength to show up and do the work, but do the lifting so that you can change your body. And I see that happen time and time again. People don't realize how strong they are until they start to come into the gym and do the kinds of things that I teach them. Or really how weak they are and how they're losing, you know, body mass. Yes, they are. Give us a suggestion on, on you know, weightlifting. Okay. First of all, yep. Brent, you have to get rid of the bloat and inflammation and work with, again, the hand and mouth before you can really have the mindset to try to go in there. A lot of times people do it the opposite way. Uh, they mm -hmm. want to go and work out. They want to be at the gym for hours and two hours, and you're still perpetuating the same bad habits. What is... A incremental step, where should we start? Give us three or four 
places to start as we start to transform our bodies again over 50? Well, the first thing is in the kitchen. Um, a lot of women start starving themselves and it's the worst thing you can do to your body to reduce your calories so low that your body is in a starvation mode and when you know when we were hunters and gatherers that was a way of keeping us alive if we didn't have food we would get um, our metabolism would slow right down our body would slow us down so we could live until we got had food again but we the body still responds the same way and we don't it doesn't realize there's a corner store so you have to not reduce your food so much that your body goes into starvation mode. That's the first thing. The second thing is know what you're eating because you can eat a cake and it's got like 500 calories, but you can eat a piece of salmon and, and some uh, sweet potatoes and salad and that's the same amount of calories, but one is nutrient dense and the other one is, is not. So you need to eat nutrient dense foods as well as make sure that you do eat at least three meals a day. And the third thing is to walk as much as you can to start with. Before you do any sort of sort of weight training, start to walk because when we walk, we, we use body fat as energy and not the glycogen from the food in our that's sit, sitting in our muscles. So walking is a great way to start to lose body fat and a discipline. So half an hour, 40 minutes, park your car further away when you go to the shops or walk to the shops or, you know, take the stairs, don't do the, the lifts or the, the, um, the escalators. So before you start to do the weight training, which I believe is the best way to lose weight, and maintain and change your body, and also to increase your muscle mass so that your um, metabolism is cranked up and you burn food faster, is to just eat nutrient-dense foods, do not starve yourself to death, and to walk as much as you possibly can at, during at the day. You know, you can make break it up into 10 or 15 minutes. You don't have to go for an hour walk straight away. You can just break it up into little 10 or 15 minutes. And then on the weekend, I mean, it's beautiful here in uh, Brisbane, Australia, and the temperature today, it's winter, and we're going to experience 27. I think it's about 80 degrees Fahrenheit. Um, mm -hmm. We can go for a walk. It's a beautiful walk, you know, yeah. anywhere. In there. So um, they're my takeouts for starting getting started and having that discipline all right so now weight training i i like i don't have the weights here um but there are different things i can do <laughs> i've got these little weights uh, that i can attach to my legs so when i walk i'm doing double duty i'm doing a double habit i have the weights on there and again not necessarily overwhelming yourself because we feel that if we do things in excess that you're going to get quicker results. You can hurt yourself, brains, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, you can become distracted. So what you want to do, in my opinion, again, as like Nell says, is just go ahead and start out slow, but mix it up. I do, you know, sometimes I'll go out and do my hula hoop you know, get those hips and that booty in shape. <laughs> That's a great exercise. Yeah. I love the hula hoop. Sometimes I'll ride my bike. Sometimes I'll dribble a ball, uh, walk. And I didn't realize this is another great exercise, gardening. Okay, I just yeah. redid my garden mm -hmm. and picking up those big cement pots and bending over and doing the water. I was exhausted. I was drenched as if I had worked out with you in the gym. Well, you know, at the beginning of the last century, um, <laughs> we, most women were walking about 18 miles a day. Wow. And they had to grow their own vegetables. They had to cut their own timber. So we, we had to carry our children. So we were very active all the time. Now, I make my own bread here. And I tell you what, I don't have one of those things that does the, the kneading. I do it myself. <laughs> you oh, can, wow. You can out for 10 minutes of kneading dough I tell you so they used to do that all the time and most of them were strong they had muscle mass and they were quite quite slender so we need to just make time to do more outside of the city because we sit and watch tv we sit in front of our computers we need to make more time to do things you know because everything I mean <laughs> we 
women never used to have cars and they used to walk everywhere. Now we get in the car just to go down the road. You know, if we I was looking at some, cars, I was looking at some of my neighbors down the street. They're from Africa. They were carrying, I can't tell you what it was but on their head. I was like, wow. And you know, like it was nothing. Walking down the street, it was nothing. So now we have talked about the body. Let's talk about the mind. Let's talk about the spirit. Because it all goes together and hormone health. You go from a flicker to a flame. Sometimes it's uncontrollable. You know, I had a friend right now that just had a hysterectomy a few weeks ago. And now she's contemplating hormone replacement therapy. Brains, if you're on it no problem, continue with it. But know that there are other things that you can do. I told her the first thing is to do a food journal. See what it is that triggers these massive heart, uh, these massive hot flashes. Uh, and then beyond that, she says, I just am so cranky. She says, I'm just so, you know, so mean. And then, you know, it, it makes my spirit feel bad. So how can we adjust the mindset and the spirit to match with the lifting that we're doing for the body? Yeah, I think it's really difficult, but I think, um, and it start, it happened to me a more about a decade ago, that I started to realise that I had to stop thinking the way I was thinking. So people, when they finally stop and have a listen to how they're thinking about themselves, because a lot of times women wake up after menopause, they might wake up, they'll go to the toilet and they'll look at themselves in the mirror or they'll put, you know, they'll stand on the scales. And what I have, of all the women I've spoken to, they will berate themselves. They will, you know, tell themselves that they're useless or that they're, they're ugly and fat and horrible. So I think we have to be very, very mindful of how we talk to ourselves. So if I keep telling myself, you're fat, you're fat, you're fat, you're ugly, you're ugly, you're ugly, it's reflected out. And it can actually become part of your reality then. So we have to be always mindful of what we're thinking about, even in particular, when we're going through menopause, and things can go a little bit crazy but we have to try and stop and think about what we're thinking about so that we don't go into that hole and make it worse than it really is. We have to stop ourselves and listen to what we're saying because, you know, if you had a really good friend who was telling you that stuff, they wouldn't be a very good friend. Exactly. Or you exactly. wouldn't have them as a friend. Yeah. So you have to be very mindful of how you're thinking. And then, of course, you have to be very mindful of what you're eating. There's Certain foods, as women, we should not be, uh, women going through menopause, we shouldn't be eating anymore. They do have a detrimental effect on our body. And well, um, I found that them, caffeine and sugar, those, you know, those were my recipes for disaster. Uh, caffeine yeah. and sugar. And again, it's hard to get away from sugar. I did a sugar detox not too long ago. I had the worst headache ever I really didn't realize how addictive and I'm not a you know an over or I thought put it that way I wasn't an over consumer of uh of uh, sugar but brains you have to realize you drink your calories too oh two or three of those nice gourmet coffees you have two or three refills of a certain particular beverage uh yeah. you don't consume enough water water is your friend if you put a little fruit in the water, you know, and that's what I had to start doing. I got rid of the syrupy sweet drinks. Sometimes I'll treat myself. Absolutely. You know, a root beer is beautiful. But after I have that, if I am still thirsty, that's letting me know that that did not quench my throat thirst. What I need is water. How much water do you suggest that your clients, uh, you know, drink on a daily basis? Because it it's based on the individuals and if some people like maybe has diabetes they can't consume a lot of water but what do you think is a fair amount of water to have well going um we, we do liters here i know you you you're not into liters but eight glasses big glasses of water for women and if you're training then try and throw in another couple of glasses 
For men, it's it's more because of the um, muscle mass that they have. But I think eight glasses is good, and it does all manner of things. It not only helps you to um, feel better, it alleviates a lot of tiredness. Now, women who are going through menopause start to get a little bit more fatigue, um, and it also helps you to go poop properly. So that's really important. You want to make sure everything's always cleaned out. So um, that is super important, water drinking every single day as much as you can. Um, I know some women find that they go to the, the toilet more often, but as your body gets used to it, it it's less and less. And wow. another little tip too is um, if you use uh, Celtic uh, salt and just a little granule of Celtic salt on your tongue before you drink water, the Celtic salt actually is a mineral and it helps to the cells in your body to absorb the moisture and but it's a little bit of mineral. We don't really eat a lot of minerals because our mm. soil is a little bit depleted these days. So, and it's nice. It tastes really nice, that little bit of salt on your tongue. Well, it you know, it's very important that you have the water. And I've noticed, I've been really checking myself out in more ways than one brain. I'm not, I'm not going to give you all the details, okay? But um, yes. it takes me about 20 minutes into my workout before I start to sweat. Okay. And connecting with the breath. The better I breathe, you know, sometimes people are just holding their breath. They're just so uptight. The more I breathe, the more I work out. And as I sip water during this, I start to perspire. There's only four ways that you're going to get rid of that weight. It's going to be through your breath. It's going to be through sweat. It's going to be through your elimination. And what's the, and they release toxins. Toxins are poison. Sometimes toxins are people in your life because they make you act a certain kind of way and make you compulsive, right? They will make you eat. They will make you drink. Um, and self-worth. What do you think about yourself? I'm never going to be that 20-year-old, belly out, you know, breast out kind of person. But I love who I am at 60. I want to look good in my clothes. Uh, if I have to use a body shaper to, to make it all come together. But I want to have a strong heart. I want to have good blood flow. I want to have good skin. All those things are important. Isn't that right now? People want to go back to being 30 and 20 and all that. You're not going to do it, even with the magic of plastic surgery. How do we settle um, in with who we are and love who we are at these particular ages? I think one of the things that I know about training and movement is that it releases endorphins and um, oxytocin into the brain. And this is such an important part of really liking ourselves because they're kind of like happy drugs. And when you finish your workout and you have those happy drugs in your body, <laughs> you um, feel good about yourself because you've done something, you've done something really special, uh, you've really helped your body. So I, from my perspective, not only thinking better thoughts, but training, whether it's cardio or whether it's weight training, releases those um, good feeling vibes into the brain so you can feel better about yourself and training at this age at our age now is not about looking like a supermodel it's about being healthy into our 80s and 90s now because women are living far longer than men now for the first time in our history so women the average woman's age is 83 to 85 so we don't want to get to 83 and 85 and be either in a nursing home on a walking uh, frame you know on all kinds of medications you want to be medication free you want to be able to still walk properly and you want to be able to have your your mind and your independence because I mean I don't know about you but I I, I can't even imagine going into a nursing home or not having the capacity to cook for myself or clean my own home I would think that would be you know it would be a death sentence to me so for all of us as women I think we're very independent and being fit and healthy will make sure that we get to that age and we're still enjoying life and still doing things and having friends and and, and you know being able to look after ourselves is very important well you are a show-off okay because I've been watching your videos brains she should be in the olympics 
Okay. I've seen you lift those weights. Now I'm not encouraging everybody to do that, but how did you start yes, building stop. up? Have you always been a fitness guru? Have you always loved fitness and working out? I have always loved fitness. Um, I've always played sport. Um, but when I was 31 in the touch football game, I broke my neck. Wow. And um, I was in a world of trouble for about a year and a half um, after I was operated on. But funnily enough, um, back in the day then when there was no Google and there was no videos and YouTube, um, I actually went down to the uh, – uh, I'd been – incapacitated for quite some time and I was getting around and I noticed that there was a class called Jazzercise and mm -hmm. yeah and she used really light weights and I started using really light weights and moving again and about two months after I noticed a lot of the pain that had been in my neck for quite some time was getting less so I thought, well, there's got to be something to do with the exercise. So I went and found out about uh, weight training. And then from there, I hired a PT and I built up my strength. And at 40, I was competing in uh, bodybuilding competitions. And then um, at 50, I became a, a, a PT. At 51, I became a PT. Wow. So, yes. and it, it's a lot of dedication um, to become a physical trainer, uh, help people, but she's not just helping you with your body. She's your coach. She's your cheerleader. She's your sounding board. Okay. But you have to show up and do the work. You got to put on those tennis shoes brains. You really, really do. I wanted to talk to you um, a little bit about some fun things that you do outside of lifting weights and cooking great meals. What are some of your guilty pleasures? Because we all have them. Oh, definitely. Um, I love chocolate. I've been a chocoholic all my life. And so on the weekends, I like to go. I've got a favorite a little cafe that I go to in a shopping center up here. It's a French um, uh, desserts. And they have the most beautiful uh, cakes and um, delicacies. <laughs> so I'll go and have a coffee and a nice piece of cake. So I always believe that um, you you only 80% of the time if you're good and you can be a little bit naughty 20% of the time. So 80-20 is a really good life, um, work, uh, enjoyment balance kind of thing so I still love to go and and have something naughty um, I don't mind a glass of wine every now and then and um, and hanging out with friends and then my uh, uh, the other thing I, I like to work in um, I haven't got a garden I've got a potted garden here but I like to to look after my plants. <laughs> uh, I have a potted garden too and I'm telling you you thought I was working in the field the way I was exhausted. You know, again, I didn't realize 10, 15 pound bags of dirt, lifting yep. that, pouring that in. It's the simple things and count it yep. all joy. Cleaning your house also too. Getting up yeah, on the yeah. ladder, building down, running the vacuum cleaner. These are exercises as well that people can do. Can you give one or two uh, suggestions to people that are not as mobile? everybody's not a, as mobile. Maybe someone's had a, a, a hip replaced or maybe they uh, are doing, uh, you know, they, they've had a shoulder injury. Are there other things that you recommend, like maybe chair yoga or swimming? What else could they do to get in a full workout that would maximize, you know, the, the, the benefits that they do have, the mobility um, they do swimming have? Swimming is a great uh, resistance training because you're moving through water so it's really difficult so walking if you've got hip problems walking through water is probably one of the ideal exercises to do to get your body stronger get your hips stronger as well and if you like if you've only got a shoulder shoulder problems one of the better ways to do exercise with shoulder problems is with resistance bands so they're very light and you just pull them apart or or move them up and down uh, with that um, that shoulder in the right plane. Don't do anything out the side. So resistance bands are ideal for people who are 
at home as well. They can work out with resistance bands and get a really, really good workout to help them build some more muscle mass up for sure. So there's no excuse. There's no getting away from it, brains. You can move it. If you don't move it, you're going to lose it. Okay. Yes. Exactly. <laughs> Now you have been a wealth of information. Please tell my brains how to contact you, you know, be it online, if you have some videos, if you do Facebook lives, how can they, you know, work with you on a global platform? Uh, yes, yes, brains out there. If you want to contact me, I have a website, nellsimpson.com.au and there's lots of information on there and you can contact me through there. And if you'd like to speak to me about any program that I run, I I work worldwide on with so with, with online. It's amazing. I mean, I've trained I've trained ladies in America, eh? <laughs> and it was funny. I was talking to a lady in the USA. I think she was from Texas, and she decided to come online on my program, right? And I said to her, I said, "Look, I I'm, I'm I really appreciate that you trust me." considering you don't really know me and she goes she says oh no she says I've been watching you for two years because <laughs> <laughs> I couldn't see her but she could see me absolutely so, um, I've been know, watching you too and I looked at some of the the weight that you have been lifting and I was just in absolute awe I was like wow that is that is phenomenal a long time I've been doing yeah, a long time I've been doing and it's beautiful. And I'm so glad that you are doing it. And I'm so glad that you haven't given up or given in, but you are giving it your all. Thank you so much for being here on the Edge Brains. I'm going to put all of Nell's contact information at the back of the interview. We're going to play this again. We're going to love. We're going to like it. We're going to share it with all of our friends. We're going to get involved. We're going to move it. Again, don't overexert yourself. Don't overthink it. Just work within it. Go in, love, like, share, and subscribe here on The Edge. And uh, we'll do everything that we can to help you live a better, full, and complete life. Thank you so much, Nell Simpson. You are the best. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye, brains.